Hey everyone, we're getting closer and closer to the new year. I can't wait what 2022 is going to be in store for all of us, especially in the pro wrestling world. Well, right now, we got two reviews right now. First one is from Choco Pro number 187, of course. I'm excited for it because we have the best bros finally putting their Age of Dream tag team titles on the line against CDK. And also, we have a very special guest coming in from the DDT appearing at Choco Pro. And he has his title on the line too. But also going to review a past event by Gunbari Pro with the uh, uh, the Climax 2021, which is a very interesting one. We definitely, definitely got to talk about. But, however, let's get started with another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rodier. So, we got a brand new Choco Pro number 187, of course. As you know, this is right before the start before we get to the start of 2022. And I, it's pretty good. I liked it. It was pretty amazing. So let's go with the first match they have of the day. We have six-man tag team match. We have Sayaka Obihiro, Chiko Shikawa, and Hagane Shinoe taking on Tokiko Kiyahara, Yuna Mizumori, and Toru Owashi. And if you guys know what I'm talking about, Toru Owashi is coming from DDT. He has a little special tradition. By the end of the year, he shows up at DDT. I mean, at Choco uh, got to move, but he decided to bring his brand new title, uh, one I did not know he had, which is, of course, the DDT Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight Championship, which is the 24-7 title, where you can defend it anytime, anywhere, however you want to do it. But that title was on the line, but total was not pinned, not much. So anyway, the match was great, a lot of good teamwork, but especially when it comes to both Kiyohara and Chiyo Koshikawa, they both almost have similar energies when it comes to getting in the ring, but we cannot count out uh, Hagane, who is known as the silent assassin, who doesn't talk that much. He just used his hand gestures to do the talking for him. But it was, of course, Hagane that pinned um, Mizumuri in the match, and that's why they call him the silent assassin, because he doesn't talk. You won't even expect him to. But it was a pretty good match. Our next match, we have the cosplay player Sayaka teaming up with the veteran uh, Kaiori Yonayami. It was a pretty good match. Yonayami, she actually had to go to a lot of extreme with Sayaka by using one of those paintbrushes thingies that has the rolly thing that worked. But however, her fast speed towards Sayaka gave her the much better edge to win when she rolled her up and pinned her. So basically, um, Kaiori won the match. Now, the main event, as I call it, is the Asian Dream Tag Team titles. We got CDK, Masahiro Takanashi, and Chris Brooks taking on the best bros, the champions, Balinaki and Meishiruga. Now, this was a match that they requested on the previous time. The reason they requested it is because, as you know, Meishiruga has been gone for almost two months. Most of the season of... Most of the, the season... She wasn't around. She was in the U.S., you know, on excursion with Emi Sakura. And that kind of played out pretty well. However, the match was so intensified. You can tell that CDK really don't like the best bros. Even Chris Brooks is getting sick and tired of them. Because they have been, right now, on an official note, they have been the Asian Dream Tag Team Champions for almost one year. That's a big accomplishment out of the best bros. I mean... That is what I like about them, and they kind of 
been one of those tag teams I enjoy. But however, a lot of good moves were done from both sides. But out of the blue, the match did not satisfy in both sides' needs. I'm talking about end it in a time limit draw. Now, on a technicality, the best rows retain the titles. But to them, they feel this is not enough. Now, it would not surprise me at some point that they would request for another shot of CDK. But this time allowing the but my other assumption that I would think for another match like this is that the fact they would put the they wouldn't have a no time limit. I don't know. I have that distinct feeling. But we'll see what happens in the future for that. Now we get to the Jonkin tournament. Now this match, these Jonkin tournament was crazy. But the one thing that felt important is when we got to the semifinals, Tomo uh, Taro Awashi, who I mentioned, is the DDT Iron Man Heavy Metalweight Champion. When he was facing y Yuna Mizumori, well, well, scratch that, Mei Shiruga. Mei Shiruga was not in a happy mood. She was crying because she's scared. So Toto Awashi made the decision to put the DDT Iron Man title on the line. That kind of lifted up Mei Shiruga's spirit. It's like, huh? Like, really? You're putting the title on the line? It it's anytime, any place, anywhere. But I did not expect him to put it on the line while he's doing Jonkin, you know. But sadly, it did not happen. But Owashi said, did say he wanted to continue putting that title on the line until he gets to the finals. And his final opponent was Yuna Mizumori. And he lost. Yuna won the title and the chocolate. But however, right in the moment, when Yuna put the title on, it appears that um, Sayaka wanted the challenger for the title. But like I mentioned before, this title is defended anytime, any way, any place. Toto Washi won it back. Just like that. <laughs> I thought it was so classic that it happened and he just took off with the belt. Because he knows they're gonna that Yuna can pin her back. So that goes for the plans. But right now I'm excited for the next one coming up with Choco Pro at 188. I might do that in the uh, in the morning of uh, 2022. Hopefully, get that done. But right now, let's move on with Gambari Pro. I'm going to review is of course the Gambari Pro, the Climax 2021. We're doing the first rounds now. Are they putting a championship on the line? Well, apparently, there's a reason why. Uh, back then, uh, um, Gambari Pro did had. This is mostly in, for independent wrestlers. Now they did had a title in the past that came from Kayanta, now known as um, Active um, Advanced Pro Wrestling uh, to AW. Um, the title was the Independent World Junior Heavyweight Title. That was like the only one that was in their possession that only was defended in Gambari. But however, because it was. Uh, later, Recon uh, was moved to, how to say, to just tap out Taka Michinuku's promotion. They had no title. But however, on September of of 2022, of this past um, this past September, uh, it was announced that they were going to have a new title called the Spirit of Gambari World Openweight Championship. So now, this specific title will be defended now in Gambari Pro. So that was the reason of this the climax to happen is to, how do I say this, to have a championship. As you know, uh, DDT does have many titles in there, but a uh, majority of them aren't. So I, I don't see the reason not having this one being defended. But there have been other titles from other independent promotions have been defended, but this one is solely for Gambari Pro, and I'm okay with the idea. But right now, let's get to the matches. Now, the first three matches are, in fact, the Gambari Pro, uh, Climax 2021 first uh, first round matches. First match we got Yomihiro Imanari taking on Balinaki. It was a pretty good match. Um, uh, I was like thinking it was very good, but however, Balinaki did not win this one. Uh, Ima, Ima, um, Imanari actually got on top of him and pinned him good down, but Balinaki completely did not. Realized that the match was over, that he lost. So basically, it was more a very disappointing match. Uh, just for your information, he will be actually appearing in other Climax shows with these guys. 
Next one, we got Nobuhiro Shimatani taking on Koiki I Iwasaki. Uh, awesome match. Uh, no Nobuhiro, he seems like seems like he was going to win it, but however, he was surprised with Iwas Iwasaki, the way he actually put him in a submission, and blammo, he advances. The next match, we have Juchiro Katsumura taking on Seiya Morohashi. Um, it was a really good intensify match. However, I did not expect a whole lot because, you know, um, I was thinking in the back of my mind that somehow say, say I was going to take this one, but no, it was, um, Katsumura, Mura, who actually pulled off an arm bar submission and forced Seiya to, to tap out. And of course, Seiya was not a happy camper with the way he lost, but it is how it is. You lost, move forward. Now, we take a break from this because there's three other matches from this. We do have the Yoshi girls taking uh, the stage for this particular match. It is tag team action. We have Yuri teaming up with Aruskaze taking on Yuna Manaze and Moeka Aruhi. It was a pretty good match, I have to say. Uh, Yuri, who's the new girl, is still learning curves. Um, I was surprised when they... Pair her up with Arukaze. I know that Arukaze and Yuna had their it, their beef not too long ago, but it looks more like a learning curve. But however, it was uh, Yuna who actually put Yuri in a chokehold to, and forced her to tap out. Even though Yuri is good uh, is learning from Yuna as an experienced wrestler that she is, um, that is that's like the way it goes. Now let's get to the final three matches of the first round in the Gabara Climax 2021. We got Tyson Mayaguchi taking on Tatsuhiro, um, Tatsuhiro Takaiwa. Uh, I've seen this guy, Takaiwa, before he was in other promotions. He's one of the those tough bastards guys that you know he's going to uh, win in every aspect. But however, he kind of is like a different, like almost a similar way to Minoru Suzuki, but he's not. And it was pretty good. I have to say it was great, but it was Taiwaka who put Mayoguchi in some sort of like um like the C4 move that Sean Spears does, but it did allow him to win the match. Next up we got Shota taking on, of course, the founder of Gambari Pro, Ken Oka. It was a pretty good match. Um this is one of those matches where one of these guys want to win it and go to the to the finals. But however, it was Kenoka who pinned Shota in order to advance. And then finally, we get our next match. These guys really don't like each other. We got Chinichiro Tominaga taking on Kosuke Ishii. Now, they don't like each other. Kis um, Ishii was really knows that he he has to have eyes in the back of his head. It did not work. But this match was short, up to two minutes and forty seconds, because uh, Tominaga pinned. Um, Kosuke Ishii to win the events, and Ishii was not a happy camper, so he just let left him lying on the on his back in the middle of the ring. And I can tell Tominagi is a very happy guy that he finally did it. But do I think he could go all the way? I'm not sure because, um, like I said, this is a brand new title. I can't wait to see who won it. Now there are two other days of this one, but we will get to those uh, in time so we can catch up with Gambari Pro. But I believe we should call it right now. Okay, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. You know, keeping it short. I hope everybody's going to have a great new year. You know, uh, stay safe. Um, hope you guys ease up on the drinking. But, you know, me, I'm going to enjoy the New Year's. Uh, right now, I'm going to review three new events. And I think I will release them soon as possible. Um, we will have... Seedling with Final Battle, which features Yuna Mizumori putting the Seedling Championship on the line. We do have the latest AAW Pro Wrestling Unstoppable, where Ruby Soho will make her return to this promotion. And finally, AEW Rampage. I'm excited for all of that. So this will be like the start will be done before or right after the new year. I can't wait to release it for all of you. And then there'll be more coming up after that. Like I said, there is Choco Pro 188. That will be done later on in the day of the start of the new year. But right now, 
I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day.